right, so we've seen how well Ryan Gosling can sing and dance in La La Land, so let's see how well he can fly to the moon. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for First Man. I really do appreciate it. Now, what First Man is about is it is a loose uh, biography or biopic of Neil Armstrong. If you don't know who Neil Armstrong is, he is the first man that landed on the moon in 1969 or could be 1968. Please forgive me if um, I don't get that date exactly right. Uh, but it stars Ryan Gosling. As I said in my intro, we've seen him sing and dance. Uh, he got a lot of attention for La La Land. And I really did like that movie. He's also was in Blade Runner 2049, The Nice Guys, The Big Short, Gangster Squad. You know, he has a very, uh, The Eyes of Marsh was really good too. He has a very long filmography as far as uh, acting is concerned. Uh, now, this film is being directed by Damien Chazelle. They've worked together before him and Ryan Gosling. Uh, Damien Chazelle is the writer and director for La La Land, and he was the writer and director for Whiplash, which came out a few years ago, which is a really great film. I remember i think it was 2015 it may have been 2014 but that was one of the better movies that i saw all year but this film right here takes place from 1961 to 1969 and it kind of gives you uh the life of neil armstrong played through uh ryan gosling now this film is uh, by universal this is the first time universal has ever used imax cameras for their sequences and i'm a big imax fan uh, i had a chance to see this film early but i missed it and i was like no i'm gonna wait even later so I can try to catch just like Saturday morning or something or for early showing of the day to see it in IMAX because those tickets are very expensive. And not only do you get a wide shot, but you get a, a, a nice tall shot right here. There's usually not any black or bars at the top and bottom when you take it home and watch it on Blu-ray or DVD. And I'll have to say, while I am an IMAX fan, this is the first time that I was not impressed with the IMAX ratio. Um, I just wasn't impressed at all. Usually it's just a big spectacle. You're mesmerized as you're sitting in a theater but as we're seeing ryan gosling floating around in space and things like that you know it just really didn't do anything for me and even though i uh paid for a cheaper early bird price for my imax ticket uh, this is the first time that i've actually seen an imax film that was shot with actual imax cameras to me that just was not worth it but what was worth it was the perspective that this film did give you as far as astronauts or space travel. And the reason why I say that is we really got a, 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 a pretty decent uh, example of Martian, which uh, played... Um, what is his name? Goodness gracious. I can't, I can't believe Matt Damon. Yeah. Matt Damon. He was the Martian. And we also Sandra Bullock and Gra uh, Gravity. You know, Martian was his own little thing. It was a great film. I liked that Gravity was mostly one take the whole time. But this film right here with First Man, it really did get to show you the perspective of the actual astronauts as they're like getting buckled up in their seat and trying to get, you know, fixated and all that good stuff. You really got a nice first person view of what the experience is and after watching this movie i can just say with confidence that i just never want to fly in space i mean unless you know technology advances itself which of course it did because this took place uh during the 60s but this is definitely not for the claustrophobic i mean well like you know that just the way that director used some of the angles and the shots in this film i was like oh my gosh like i mean these guys really have a lot of balls just to like go up and you know and, and just do this and a lot of it is very experimental and you know there's a lot of death and tragedy and trials and tribulations and things like that that go through in this film and we really do get to see how neil armstrong had to deal with that film excuse me not deal with this film but deal with these moments and that's just what it's really about it's kind of like half about what his life and how he deals with trauma and then you know how that relates to him trying to uh you know be the first person to land on the moon or whatever and you know he does deal with a lot i like how the film kind of foreshadowed how you know what his motivation was for flying on the moon and like what it meant to him because that type of thing can mean a lot to a lot of people when i was looking some things up you know actually there was a lot of controversy with this film when it debuted 
uh, at a film festival a couple of months ago. And slight spoiler here, they don't show him actually stomping the flag into the ground. And there was a number of reasons why. And that's just because they said if you really, uh, it was, you know, Neil Armstrong is not here anymore. He passed away in 2012. Uh, he was born in 1930. So rest in peace, sir. But a lot of people were saying if you really knew Armstrong, you know, he really didn't care about borders and country. Well, he cared about it, but he really didn't consider himself an American hero. And they felt that leaving that part out of the film would uh you know uh which you know translate over borders and countries and things like that and you know i i, I can understand that to a degree uh, i don't have that much stake in the game i'm not over here just like yeah we were the first to land on the moon i mean you know hey it, it, it is what it is you know that is something to be proud of but you know i i understand where they're coming from you know in this film um but, you know, flying to the moon and, you know, that can mean a lot to a lot of people and a lot of things and like what their motivation is going in, whether it's true or not. I really like the way they tied the bow and wrapped up to where, you know, and it, they showed us and didn't tell us like why he was going to the moon. And it was a very touching moment. The acting in this film was pretty good, too. Uh, we got a pretty decent performance from Ryan Gosling and also his wife, uh, who was being played by Claire Four. Claire, Claire, Claire Foy. Claire, I don't know what her is. You spell her name F O Y. I don't know why I can't say it. Claire Foy. That's his name. Janet Armstrong. She did a very, very great job. You know, and you know, to me in this film, she had a small role, but when she did pop on screen, she really did pop. And I was like, okay, you know, what I'm saying this this uh, lady right here is not someone to be uh, to be messing with. We got Buzz Aldrin in here also being played by Corey Stoll. It was kind of interesting the way they showed him kind of like a jerk. Then really nobody wanted to, uh, you know, be around. And, um, you know, there were, this film also kind of hit on like sacrifices and, you know, uh, just a balance of life. And, you know, you know, you got to take care of your family. But at the same time, you, you know, you working for the country and things like that. You know, uh, and also kind of a cool thing about this movie is that when they landed on the moon, um, they, there, there was a lot of real recordings from real life, you know, in Houston and Florida, you know, that they use in this movie or whatever. It was the real live recordings. And I kind of thought that was cool. And I'm not finna sit here and just pretend that when I heard, when I heard in the film, like, oh man, that was the real voice. I didn't notice that. I just looked it up, you know, before I hit record on this. But at the same time, I respect it and think that's pretty cool. But hands down, the best part that I loved about this movie was the score. The, the composition was brilliant. It was done by Justin Hurwitz. I mean, like, seriously, it was a beautiful orchestra, a beautiful symphony. A very talented man, you know, was doing his thing or whatever, uh, you know, uh, putting this performance together. I mean, it was it was lovely. There was a, a two songs in particular. It, it was one of them that got me to where they was um, Ryan Gosling was in space. I don't want to tell you exactly the when. And he was losing control out of something. And it was kind of like out of a horror scene. And Ryan Gosling is the villain. But space itself was the monster. It was the slasher. And just the way it was kind of spinning around and with the sound effects, kind of like this eerie, like, ear, ear, ear. I know I'm pretty not really not giving you a good example. You just kind of had to be there in the theater and with the music in the background. I, I was kind of, t I was, you know, I was kind of taken back by that. I was like, man, they're really doing a good job of like, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, putting you in this situation and making you kind of feel exactly what his feel like, what Ron Gosling's feeling is like, oh crap, I'm about to die in space and ain't nobody coming to get me. You know what I'm saying? But two other scenes, uh, one, I just don't remember. I just remember that the song came in two particular times two separate times but when he was actually landing on the moon like when the the rover or whatever was hovering over trying to land the music right there was like so damn good like seriously i was just saying to myself i cannot wait till this movie ends so i can go to the store or go home and download this soundtrack because it was just that dope i couldn't tell what music instrument it was it was going back and forth between like a piano and like a harp or maybe it was both of them with a combination of a whole bunch of other stuff because i'm not no music expert but they was hitting that hole big time. I mean, seriously, like, I got to the edge of my seat, and I was just like, I started closing my eyes and going like this, and I was like, oh, no, I gotta open my eyes, I gotta, I gotta see what's going on, but, like, I was just that into the beat or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was very, it was just so majestic and poetic, this soundtrack or whatever, like, 
It really did stand out to me. Like, seriously, I, if, if nothing else, I do want this soundtrack or this song to get some type of recognition when it comes to war season because it was just that damn good. Like, seriously, guys, when I'm done with this video and uploading and all that stuff, if, if I remember off the top of my head, I'm going to find out the name of that song and I'm going to be jamming it in my car. But I said all the good things in the film, but let's talk about the bad. Um, honestly, it is a bit long. The runtime comes in at around two hours and 21 minutes. And there were just some times to where I was just a little bored. Um, it's, and I hate to sound insensitive, but it, especially when it came to Neil Armstrong's, uh, you know, what he was dealing with at home or whatever, it was kind of long and drawn out and daunting. And, you know, I really just didn't really find anything that interesting until there was actually like in the space shuttle or had the suits on or was on the moon or anything like that. All that extra stuff just wasn't that interesting to me. Um, I still enjoyed the film, but I just can't say, oh my gosh, you just need to run out and see this thing. If I had to rate First Man out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Yes, a 7 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen First Man or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. But if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, seriously, man, really help me out. I do want to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I can only do that with your help. So please subscribe, like the video, and share this thing to help your boy out. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review you for first man starring ryan gosling directed by damon chazelle and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace